Hello, in this grand finale of my Cost of Capital series, we're going to end at where we began the story by showing how the weighted average cost of capital is utilized in project and corporate valuation. And we're going to begin this final presentation by recalling that the goal of the firm is to maximize shareholder wealth. And this is accomplished by maximizing the keywords here, value of the firm. Now, the value of the firm, as you re may recall, is the present value of all the projected free cash flows uh, going down the stretch. For a project, though, um, it's essentially the same definition, except that a project is going to have an economic life. And so we're going to project free cash flows over the economic life of the project. Notice that either way, the discount rate, R, is the weighted average cost of capital, which is the required rate of return on the project or on the firm, reflecting the combination use of debt and equity capital. So for a project, we're going to have, like I said, a defined uh, period during which cash flows are going to be estimated. So if, by the way, um, if you need to learn uh, the process for cash flow estimation, I have a couple of videos here on YouTube that you can access to refresh your uh, understanding of that concept. But anyways, for a project, say we have a five-year project, and using this timeline, I've laid out the cash flows we have projected. And what we want to do today is to determine its intrinsic value, its present value, that is. And let's say the weighted average cost of capital appropriate for this project is 12%. So basic uh, old school definition of present value right here and substitution tells us that the cost of value of this project is 5489.59 so now meaning well let's say that to invest in this project will cost us five thousand dollars so as you can see this project is going to have a net present value of 489.59 because if the project is valued at 5489.59 and if it'll cost us 5000 well the value of the project exceeds the cost by 489.59 in which case you're going to say the project has a positive net present value and should be accepted if on the other hand the project's cost is above 5489 then you're going to reject the project and say hey the project has a negative uh, net present value all right so that's the linear process for project selection for corporate in corporate valuation it's essentially the same I've drawn out the timeline here slightly differently notice that my error goes on and on and on and so if I go back here you would see that I used infinity to denote the uh, unending stream of cash flows because a, a corporation is um, a going concern so we can only project free cash flows up to a certain horizon it could be three years four years or in this example five years at the end of that horizon we're going to calculate what's called the horizon value and we're going to do so using the constant growth valuation model where uh, whereupon we're going to assume that free cash flow here is going to be growing at a constant rate into the foreseeable future and so for horizon value at the end of the fifth year we're going to base it on the uh, free cash flow in the fifth year and then grow it at the constant rate and divide that by the difference between the weighted average cost of capital and the constant growth rate making sure to use this valuation formula that WAC has to be greater than the growth rate otherwise this definition will not have any economic meaning so now with that um, noting that the horizon value in this example of the fifth year occurs at the same point in time as the fifth year's free cash flow, we can add the two together in the discounting process to make it quick and easy for us. So in this example, let's say that we wish to calculate the present value of a firm with the following uh, cash flows if the weighted average uh, cost of capital is 12% and earnings growth rate is uh, 4%. So first, our order of business here is to calculate the horizon value at the end of the fifth year using the constant growth model and you can see the substitutions here which in include the fifth year's free cash flow and so we're saying that at the end of the fifth year the intrinsic value of this firm is going to be around 177,000 so in combination with 9,000 as I sh 
uh, define right here and substitute right here, we find when all is said and done that the intrinsic value of this firm is 91765 so this would be called the value of the firm's operations and if the firm has any external investments then we're going to have to add those in, uh, to this amount to find the complete total value of the firm but in the absence of that this would be our best estimate of the intrinsic value of the firm and as you can see two important estimations would be the numerator free cash flow and the other as you now know the weighted average cost of capital which is uh, which has been the business of the series um, in play right now. So to wrap this up, what can we do when we know what the intrinsic value of the firm is? Well, it would be to then determine what the intrinsic value of the firm's equity is because as you know, equity is the basic um, uh, is the basic uh, ownership of the firm. And so an equity holder is uh, has the residual claim on the firm. So if you want to buy a firm, you gotta have, you're going to have to be the common equity holder. So in this example, let's say the firm has $60,000 of debt. So if the, firm, if the firm's intrinsic value is determined to be 91765 as I show right, uh, right here. All right, let's uh, go back here real quick. All right, so, um, so and the firm has debt, interest-bearing debt that is of 60000 so that means that the difference is the intrinsic value of equity. So this would be another important way of estimating the value of equity. Now though, you can also express this on a per share basis. In this example, if the firm has 2,000 shares, simply divide this by 2,000 as I demonstrate right here, and you're going to find the intrinsic stock price to be $15.88. And that's a wrap. Let's keep learning.